All right, we have a couple of great presentations tonight, and uh, Ann Stanton, who is a, a longtime personal friend and uh, a legend in a lot of circles in IT. Unfortunately, she drank some Kool-Aid, and now she's working for Microsoft. But <laughs> we forgive her, and we're delighted to have her, so big hand for Ann Stanton. Yeah? Oh, there it is. Great. So I, I'm kind of embarrassed to follow the people who uh, were, came before me because I'm just a geek, you know. Um, but I've been working in the software industry for about 25 years. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to, I have basically set up a Microsoft Dynamic CRM online environment, basically a 30 day trial, named it Carolina IT Demo. And I'm going to log in, and I'm going to show you Dynamics CRM, which is customer relationship management software. And Dynamics CRM is used by many, many different kinds of organizations. It's used by traditional organizations that have sales teams that use it to track their prospects, their leads, their customers, and all the contacts associated with those. It's also used by service companies who want to keep track of tickets or cases and um, all the activity that happens around those cases. And tonight I'm going to focus a little bit more on the services module. Does anybody here work with CRM at all? We've got two people over here. So if you have further follow-up questions, you've got members in your group who know dynamic CRM. I've been specializing in CRM since 2004. And um, I've been blogging on the sub subject. And I've worked as a small business IT professional and a consultant on that product. I've worked running a Dynamics um, partnership focused on Dynamics CRM in Texas. And I've, for the last four years, I actually was at a large enterprise account working in their IT department. And yes, now I am with Microsoft. I work with Microsoft Consulting Services. So. And I have to admit, working with Microsoft has been, I mean, I've only been there three months, but just being surrounded by the technical people that I'm surrounded by right now is incredible. I mean, my team on my current project has been amazing. So um, I'm going to go up and I think I'm connected here. So we'll see what we got. And you guys don't mind, I guess, if I sit down here. It's just easier to sit down and type. So what's amazing about Dynamic Serum Online is you don't have to. Yep. I can do it. Mm. Windows P. For those of you using Windows 8, it's one of your hotkeys. Um, what's amazing about CRM Online is that you actually can log into online website, Bing on it, Google on it, and get a free 30-day trial in about three clicks. And this is an environment, I have not touched this environment. I have literally just logged in, set up a free 30-day trial. It comes with sample data. And this is what you get out of the box, So, just so people know. Um, the other thing you can do with Dynamic CRM is you can customize it through configuration or through C++ or .NET. And you can literally take this application and apply it to all sorts of custom programming um, needs. So on my left hand side of my menu here, I've actually got accounts and contacts. Accounts are your companies, right? Contacts are people. I also have a workplace, which has generic items. I have my sales module, which is going to have things in it like leads and tracking opportunities. My marketing module. And marketing actually allows me to track all sorts of expenses for different events, allows me to take contacts and associate them to a marketing list that I want to do mailing to, and a variety of other marketing tasks. And then we have our services module. So out of the box, really, you get kind of three core modules. You get marketing, you get sales, and you get service. So I'm going to focus a little bit on service, because that's what I had said I was going to do. And then if you have other questions about anything in the system, just 
holler out, ask. I love an interactive presentation. So what do we mean by service? What we mean by service is literally the tracking of a case or a ticket or a service request or whatever you want to call it. In this particular system out of the box, they call them cases. So if I was to create a new case, I basically can open a form, and this is my data entry screen for a new case. Now, all of these fields are canned, but I can turn any of them off, or I can add any field I want to the screen. So if there's something else that wants to be tracked, I can do that. Basically through configuration, not writing code, not going into SQL, not doing anything, no heavy lifting. So let's pretend we're, does anybody have any example ticket they want to track? Any, go ahead, make my day. Okay. Yep. So it's a. But this this seems a lot easier. Right. So the difference between dynamic CRM and SharePoint. Number one, they're totally integrated, so you can use them together. Number two, SharePoint is totally designed from the ground up to deal with unstructured data. What I mean by that, it's really, really good at document libraries, tracking revisions of documents, organizing folders, but it's not really totally designed for structured data with relationships to other data. It's pretty good at kind of an Excel spreadsheet look and feel in SharePoint. Dynamic Serum is totally built for structured data, meaning that this case, has a relationship to an account, right, or a customer. It also has a relationship to um, security and has all the security built in that you can customize. So the security in Dynamic Serum is much tighter, much more complex than it is in SharePoint. So the benefit of Dynamic Serum with SharePoint is that Dynamic Serum can handle all the structure and the structured data like cases and activities associated with the case, which you don't really have to design because it's built into the system where SharePoint really is more built for dealing with document management knowledge bases and things. Yes. Uh, go ahead, you want me to do an example? <laughs> so I'm just going to pretend that your, your company is called affordable equipment because I didn't load all the Carolina IT Pro companies into the system. It came in via, I don't have an origin. So this is a problem rather than a question. And I'm going to put in a follow-up of, let's say, 12, 15. Let me pick that. Status reason in progress, normal priority, and literally the system also has the ability to tie this case to a contract. I haven't set up any contracts. So I'm not going to get into the advanced feature of tying to a contract. Save and close. I've now created a case in the system, which I can actually see by sorting by case number in this case or by date. It's the first one here. So in Dynamic Serum, we have this thing called Views. It looks kind of like Excel. And you can actually have all sorts of different kinds of views. You can create your own. So in this case, it's my active cases versus all active cases, or even cases that have been closed, which would be my resolved cases. And I don't have any resolved cases. So if I go back to active cases, 
I can literally open this case that I just opened. Where'd it go? And I can click on resolve case if it's closed and done, or I can open it again and resolve it. So really simple, you can create a case, you can have a progress, right? Various status reasons on hold, waiting for details. You can make that list as long as you want through configuration. You can make it a question, a problem, and I can resolve it when I'm finished with it. The other thing that comes out of the box is um, cues, but question on opening a case and resolving a case. Yes. I do have to go into customization, and the reason I have to do that is because when you have a pick list, um, a lot of companies don't want their users just adding on the fly pick list items because your quality goes down. So the way Dynamic Serum is built is that you do go into customize to customize that um, field if you have access to customize. Now I'm logged in as a system admin. Um, but you can see right here, I can click on either customize the form, the data entry form, or I can customize the entity. So an entity from a SQL thought is basically a small subset of tables, or a table, almost. It's not quite one table, but an entity in terminology is a table. So if I customize the entity, and I'll just do this, um, for every entity, a case is an entity, I have a set of forms, usually just one data entry form. I have a set of views, and I have the fields in that entity. So in this particular case, we wanted to modify one of the fields, right? And we wanted to modify the drop-down field, which was status, right? Mm, I think it's status reason, actually. So I'm just opening status reason. I hope that's the right field. And we're doing this over wireless, so. And here's my reasons. In progress, on hold, waiting for details, researching. Click add. Type in a value like um, waiting. Mm. What's a good value? Mm. Waiting on parts. Or add, yeah, we can put in an other, although that's not recommended, right? Because then everybody just picks other instead of what they're supposed to be picking. So I've add a, added a couple. I can use this little save button. So we save it. I can also make the field required if I want to versus no constraint. So we'll do save and close. I'm going to click on case, and I do have a safety feature in Dynamic Serum when I do make a customization that I need to publish that customization. And the reason I do that is so that if somebody, 18 million people are working in the system, I can go in and make customizations, and then at night I can publish them when nobody's in the system. So publish is, so what I just did was a system administration task, a configuration task of dynamic CRM. You might have one or two people in your company that would do that, maybe the application administrator, the CRM administrator. They can go in and make those changes live while other people are working in the system. They can do a whole set of changes, and then they can publish when they want to, when they're ready to release that to the user population. So the publish is just a little bit of a safety precaution um, to make that. Uh, no, if there's no constraint, if it's not a required field, you do not have to have a default. So you'll notice that I saved the record I was working on and now my drop-down list has been updated. So now I can actually pick that waiting on parts or researching or the, uh, the other, the beloved other. Sure. 
The publish can be done anytime you decide to do it. Uh, no. Uh, not without writing a little code. The other thing that Dynamic CRM gives you is the ability to export customizations. So if you have a test box and you're playing around, maybe your own CRM online environment, you can export your customizations and import them into another CRM instance. That gives you another kind of an IT way to deliver solutions to your customers. So this case that I just created, well, you know, it, it has some needs, right? And probably the first activity that needs to happen is we need to make a phone call or have a task where somebody makes a phone call to resolve this case. So activities in Dynamic CRM are the interactive long-term history and movement of a given case. So you create the case, and then you can have lots of different activities to resolve this case. So for instance, I can create a new activity of type task where somebody might need to check the registration software to see if it is working correctly, right? Because we've reported a case where the registration didn't work, somebody has to go out and check it. And you can assign that to a person who's going to do that. In this case, I'm the only person in the system. <clears throat> you can even put a due date and associate with it. So I just created a task. Now maybe I have another activity where somebody needs to make a phone call and call the user who reported the problem. So call and get manual registration or whatever, you know, or call and follow up for more details. So you can create a series of activities that have to be completed by a variety of people to close this case. You'll notice that I'm still on this case. Whoops. And then I can go to activities. These are associated activities. The other thing I can do is I can actually, from Outlook, track emails that are associated to this case, and the emails would show up under closed activities. And from ERM, from ERM, from CRM, I can actually create an email and send it. So there's actually, even with hosted dynamic CRM, there is an Outlook client. There, a little piece of software comes free with the software that you purchase that you can install on your local version of Outlook that will connect CRM to your Outlook. So you can run this right through Outlook. I don't have that component installed on this as my work machine, so I don't have that installed for this demo. So this is a test email. And this is the email body. And I can send it if I want to. I haven't set up my email, though, so I'm just going to save and close it and pretend it's sent. So I now have this case in the system. It's not resolved. And I have all the activities associated with this case and all the tracking of those activities. I can additionally add notes. And if I add a note, I made a call, and this is not a valid ticket case. Sorry. <laughs> when I save the note, it actually automatically tags the note with um, the user who's logged in, the time, and the date. So if you've got three or four people working this case, you can keep track of notes on that and who, who, you know, who said what. Any questions so far about the services within CRM? Can I close the case? Um, it will. It does not let you resolve the case if you have open activities. So it comes up and it says, there are still open activities with this case. These must be closed before the case can be closed. So we will open the case. We will go to the activities. Now you're going to ask me if I can close them all with one click. And I don't know. When in doubt, use your right click. No. Hmm. 
Yeah, but I don't see a close, like a close activities. Um, if I select all of them, yeah. I think I have to close them one at a time. Those are closed. Um, so if I really had a need to like close all activities on a given case, what I would do is I'd just put together a little workflow that allowed me to do it manually. So there's some... Um, There's a, some workarounds for that. But in this particular workflow that I'm showing, yes, you would have to close each of them. As, and you'll notice close is kind of a big deal. Was it canceled? Was it closed? So it does have kind of a process around it if you're using those activities to do different things. This one should actually be closed. Emails are usually closed when sent. Well, I'll just delete the email for now. Today. Oops. Now I can resolve the case. When you resolve a case, it actually sets it to inactive. So it actually will disappear off my active cases list. The other thing you can do in activities is you actually can capture time in activities, like beginning time, end time, and it will roll that time up to the case. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it, it, dynamic CRM is interesting when it comes to reporting because if you look at this view right here, any view that I'm looking at, I can actually export to Excel. And I can do export to Excel as a dynamic spreadsheet or a static spreadsheet. And what I mean by that is a dynamic spreadsheet, like a dynamic worksheet, if I export it to Excel as a dynamic worksheet and I emailed it to another CRM user, it would honor the security of the other CRM user. So the other CRM user might be a manager who has twice as many records. I would send it to him when he opened it, it would auto-populate with his data. Maybe it's somebody who hates CRM, doesn't want to learn a new system, loves Excel, lives and dies by Excel. I can create the Excel spreadsheet for them. And when I send it to them, their data will populate. Let's see if I can make this work. Yeah. Oh, it's mad at me because I don't have the Outlook client installed. I hate it when my demo does that. No. I will tell you that um, uh, with the next release of Dynamic CRM, which is scheduled for December or January, end of December or January, CRM Online, is um, it's either this release or the next one. It will be multi-browser multi supportable, meaning that you don't have to use Internet Explorer. So this is um, basically the data that I was looking at dumped into Excel. The other thing that you can do from a reporting perspective is you have this button called Advanced Find. And for anybody who's um, familiar with queries, Advanced Find is the ability to query based on your own selection criteria and picking the columns that you want to see. So. You can use advanced find on any view, whether it's accounts or contacts or cases. So it's defaulting basically status equals active. But I can also say edit call, I mean, um, yeah, edit properties, give it a different name, and active cases. I can edit columns and pick the columns that I want. So add columns, and it's going to give me a list of all the columns, for instance, case type, case origin, whatever I want to add, created by.
And then I can put my query in. Maybe. Details. Select. In this case, I'm going to pick owner equals an, or owner equals current user, and I'm going to click results. And I should just get that one case. <laughs> I get all cases because I set up the demo. <laughs> but you get the idea. The night. So advanced find allows you to pick different columns for your sort. It also allows you to pick um, different querying select criteria. And they can be ands or ors. So reporting, you can use advanced find. Question. So the other thing that dynamic serum gives you is this concept of charts. So you'll notice a little arrow over here. So when you're thinking about trends, you can also click and create your own charts. So you can create your own views. You can also create your own charts. So we're going to go up here to the charts button at the top. We're going to click a new chart. And we can then select a field, for instance, case. Um, I, mean, I don't have any, well, I could do it by product, I guess. So the first thing it wants to do is count, and then it wants to count things. Let's try this one. So in this time, way I actually have how many products per customer? I hate Excel pivot charting. Anybody want to help me out here? Let's do stat bar. Let's not pick customer. So you basically can pick your two axes, basically. Product was a bad choice. <laughs> you actually want a numbered field, like actual service units. Anyway, you can set up your own charts, just like you can set up your own views. In Workplace, you also have the ability to do dashboards. And dashboards are basically a series of charts. In this particular case, this is a dashboard of the sales pipeline, the lead source, cases by priority. See, they have a pretty chart here. <laughs> and then My Activities. Another example of a dashboard would be customer service performance dashboard. So we've got the service leaderboard, case resolution trend, like you were asking about trending by day. This one's blank. And then knowledge base articles by status. New, I can literally create a new dashboard. And I can pick the format. And it's all wizard driven. So that gives you a lot of power to be able to do a lot without actually having to go and write reports. If you have dynamic serum online, reporting is SQL reporting services. So any SQL based report um, is basically what dynamic serum uses to write reports. If you've got some favorite charts, You can actually add them here in addition to having them be entity specific. Active cases, case make by origin.
That's how fast it is to create, a, create an item on a dashboard. In this case, I just did one. Could you have a, an item on the dashboard that links to some external data source? Yes. So if I edit this dashboard, I actually have the ability on here. You see this little button, insert web resource? Actually, what you can do is um, we give you, let's see if I can show you. I'll go down to account. So if I'm looking at account, we actually give you the ability to export fetch XML. Now, where's the button? I'm just looking for the ability. Um, most so from a reporting perspective, we actually will give you the whole fetch XML dump that you can pull into other systems and work with, or you can use Excel. I just can't find it. Maybe on the reports menu. Sorry, I don't know where it went. I'll find it and let you know. Um, although it's SQL, if it's CRM online, it is protected by security. So even on premise, it's protected by security. And what I mean by that is this system has a full-blown security system built in. So I can only see data that I have the rights to see. And the way that CRM does that is it actually has a layer between SQL and the application called filtered views. So it pulls data out of SQL into a table of filtered data per user. And that way, even at the enterprise level, you can protect the access to data using security and CRM on the back end as well, because users only have access to their data in their filtered view. Settings is where the powerful engine lives. And in settings, if you go to administration and users, you actually have the ability to assign security roles or create security roles. And security roles can be like in this case, I have system admin and salesperson. If I open the salesperson security role, you'll notice that it literally lets you pick of all the core records, marketing, sales, service, and then also security by user, by business unit, by parent-child business units, and by organization. Create, read, write, delete, append, append, do, assign, share. So you can get very granular in terms of what you allow people to do in the security roles that you create in CRM. Very different than SharePoint. For those of you working with SharePoint, one of the weaknesses of SharePoint when you're developing and designing in SharePoint is that the security starts to break down the more complex the solution you build. Whereas this actually has a very complex security, including security around custom entities that you might create. And so that um, gives you that whole security around structured data. By the way, to create a custom entity, I do not have to be a developer to do that. So if I want to create a new table in here, or if I want to create a new field, I literally can go into um, settings. I can go down to customizations. And I can get to the actual fields like I was at before through customize the system at um, some pretty scary levels, meaning there's a lot of power here. You can do some really big damage. Um, but it also allows you to do some very powerful things, like for instance, if I didn't want it to be called account, I wanted it to be called member organization because you're members and it, the member organization would be the organization that you work for or a member company. I can literally come in here and type member companies 
Type in member company as the display name. Quick save. Oops. Oh, come on. Where's save? Yeah, right. It's been a long two weeks, okay? I'm a morning person. Once I save that and I publish it, the system is going to populate that throughout the system automatically. So now instead of accounts, it's going to say member company across the board. Now, if I didn't want to use the word cases, I could do the same thing. In fact, the project I'm working on right now is taking dynamic CRM, and we have configured it so that it meets the needs of a company that wants it to be called service requests, right, as opposed to cases. And it meets the need of collecting information on um, buildings that have problems. So, for instance, if somebody needed to report that a table was broken and a chair needed to be replaced or the plumbing was broken, We've now taken Dynamic Serum and made it a full-blown facilities management system. And we did that with, a, we did do some customization and we did do some development. With a small development team, we made a um, facilities management system out of Dynamic Serum in two months. We're going live on December 21st. Um, and we just, I'm down here actually doing user acceptance testing. We just finished our user acceptance testing, so. It's very exciting. Did I do publish already? I can't remember. Yeah, I probably did. Doesn't hurt to publish multiple times. All right, what else can I show you? Anybody else want to see something specific? Yes. No, wait, I just want to make sure the word account changed. Oh, not yet. F5, refresh. It'll refresh in a minute. Question? If you have the Outlook client, you, have, you automatically have Word Mail Merge, and you just push the ma Word Mail Merge button like the Excel button, and it opens the Word Mail Merge template, and you walk through and add the fields. So you don't have to export to Excel. It does require the Outlook client for some reason. That's what I thought. Yep. You can also export to Excel and merge to Word. Another question. Yeah. I live on the east side of the street, and there's a west side of the street with the same address. Yeah. And as you know, E and W are right next to each other on the keyboard, and it's very easy for me to get stuff from them. In fact, the other day, I had the furnace guy come over to my house, and I didn't call him. <laughs> and in the past, I had my bank statements, you know, just quit coming to me. Well, you know how you have to fix that. You have to have your bills go to the other address, and the furnace guy fix your <laughs> furnace while he's there. Right. I was wondering, is there a way where you can uh, sort of get the furnace guy to come over and get the furnace guy to come over and get the furnace guy to come over and get the the way that you would, you have two choices to do that. The one way that you could do that is you could actually have a field that's a drop down, right? East, west. That they have to pick either east or west. That complements the address. Fairly quick configuration, but a little not standard. The other way is you could add a little JavaScript. So CRM supports JavaScript on the form that on change, right? When you move from that field, the JavaScript changes the E to east or the W to west. 
Right. So you want it, them to pick east or pick west? So, uh, I mean, just off the cuff, right? One of the ways I'd do it is I'd have an address field, so it was street address, and then another field that was required that was a drop-down that your only choices were north, south, east, and west. And so they have to pick north, east, west, and make it a required field. I don't know, that doesn't totally solve the problem, but... Anybody else have any other ideas for that one? Go ahead. Yep. So dynamic CRM is not supposed to be an ERP system. It was never designed to be an ERP system. However, because from a sales perspective, it does handle order orders, invoicing, and uh, qu quotes, orders, and invoicing. Once you click invoice, there is a connector to Great Plains. And then there's lots of third-party solutions that also connect to many other accounting systems. Um, I think at this point there might even be a QuickBooks connector, um, but I'm not sure. I haven't done that for a long time. Um, but yeah, in general, Dynamic Serum is not trying to be an accounting system. Um, on the enterprise level, probably the most popular one is right now is Dynamics AX. That market is just going crazy. Any other questions? Does it have an automatic escalation? It has a number of features when it comes to escalation. So um, it has queues that you can define so that when you save a ticket, it can go into different queues. And those queues can have different escalation factors associated with them. You can also set it so it has a priority and that you do different things on different priorities. So for instance, the project I'm working on right now when a P1 or a P2 ticket is created, the ticket is actually sent to a telephone queue with a partner, in this case, 8x8. Eight eight. Um, but we also have IP on that at, at Microsoft. But, so instead of the ticket like just sitting there or in a queue waiting for somebody to deal with it or for a user to look at the queue, it actually sends the ticket to a special email address that pops up the pop-up window with a call queue from the telephone vendor. I don't know if that answers your question, but you probably would have to do a little bit more configuration when it comes to the call centers, maybe even some um, custom software. So in our case, we actually have a little plug-in that goes into the system that looks at the priority. Is it a P1 or P2? If it's a P1 or P2, it goes to the call log. If it's not, it goes automatically through our integration la layer to the tier one provider who services the case. But I mean, that's at the enterprise level. Did that answer your question? What, what would you expect automatic escalation to be? To happen? What would you want to happen? Well, you, you enter in a trouble ticket that sits there eight hours and nobody's touched it, and it automatically gets escalated to, to, to someone else. Okay. In that case, what you probably do, and I'm, again, this is a little outside my experience, but um, you can have a workflow that literally says if that created on time is, hits eight hours, then either create an email or create a task or create an action or make something happen, assign it to the manager. Right? Because each of these cases actually has an owner. You can have the assign to function, assign it to somebody else. And when I talk about workflows, it's the Windows Workflow Foundation. And it's, I'll show you how to do it. So it's a little bit technical, but you guys are all techies, right? So you go down to settings, you go to processes, you go to, come on. Create a process. Let's see. Escalation, right? Escalation. On case, it's a workflow, not a dialogue. Okay. We're going to say. Hmm. 
So a workflow can only kick off. You guys are going to have to help me with this one. The workflow can only kick off when a record is created, when a status changes, when a record is assigned, or when a field changes. So let's do when record is created, add a step, right? We are going to assign the record. Oh, no, wait. We're going to check condition. I'm going to delete this one. So our condition is going to be if created on date and time is greater than if it lets us do eight hours. Select case. Why are you acting slow on me? Come on. It serves me right for using wireless. <laughs> Should burn. Uh, let's see. I want to do created on. You can tell I haven't programmed for twenty years. Primary entry is case. Select. Created on. Is greater than. And we can't make it dynamic, right? Hour. Right? Dynamic value. After eight hours, created on. So I said if case created on is greater than eight hours. Right? Save and close. Then add step. Say it again. All right, assign case to Oh, okay. That's why it was giving me an error because it was a parent case. And then maybe you put the manager's name in here, whoever it is. So that workflow should run on create of a case, it will count for eight hours, and then it'll sign the case if it's not resolved. Like I'd add a couple of conditions, like case is not resolved. But my point in showing that is that workflow can be written with conditions, if then else, that can kick off when a case is created, that can go for eight hours, and then can escalate it for you. It's, it's a little bit programming. Right, you probably don't want just an end user doing that, but it's not, see, it, you don't have to get into Visual Studio to do it. Right, time for a break? Time for a break? Time for the next speaker? Yep. Answered all the good questions? All right. <laughs>